Hello, in this problem we are going to prove the triangle inequality for complex numbers. That's what this is called here. And we have two complex numbers, alpha and beta, and we have to prove that the modulus of alpha plus beta is less than or equal to the modulus of alpha plus the modulus of beta. So this proof relies on a very um, key uh, result uh, from complex numbers. And it's a simple one. And it basically says if you have, so recall, there's a couple different things we're going to use, but the, the real main one is this one. If you have the modulus of a complex number and you square it, that's equal to the complex number times its conjugate. Okay, so that's, that's one of the um, things we're going to be using. We're also going to use something that says if you take the conjugate of the conjugate, you get back what you started with. Okay. And um, we're also going to use something that says if you add a complex number to its conjugate, you get two times the real part of the complex number. But the key one, the one we're going to use right away, is this one. So basically, we're going to show that this squared is less than or equal to all of this squared. Okay, so let's start. Proof. So we'll start by squaring this. We're going to look at the square of this expression, or of this number, rather. So alpha plus beta, and then take the modulus, or absolute value, and we're squaring it. So what is this? This is equal to alpha plus beta times the conjugate of alpha plus beta. That's by this um, formula here, which I was discussing. So very, very important, very powerful, very useful. The um, conjugate distributes over addition. So this is going to be alpha plus beta, conjugate of alpha plus conjugate of beta. And now let's just go ahead and, and multiply this out. So let's just start with the alpha. So alpha times alpha conjugate is alpha alpha conjugate. Alpha times beta conjugate is alpha beta conjugate. Okay, now, now the beta. Beta times alpha conjugate is beta times alpha conjugate. And then beta times beta conjugate is beta times beta conjugate. So right away here you see that some really cool stuff is happening because this key um, formula, which we were talking about, is coming up again, right? So right away you can see that this is going to be the modulus of alpha squared, and this one over here is going to be um, the modulus of beta squared. So the issue is, you know, what goes here? What can we do with these pieces here? So we're going to try to use this. These look very similar. So the way to figure it out is just to figure it out. So I'm just going to take one of these. I'll take this one. It doesn't matter which one you take. There's multiple ways to do this. Watch this. And if I take the conjugate of this, what is that going to be? Well, the conjugate distributes over the product. So this will be the conjugate of alpha and then conjugate conjugate. So it's conjugate of alpha beta. Oh, look at that. So the conjugate of this is over here, right? So what we can do, I'm actually going to erase this. Okay, so this is equal to, okay, which is here, uh, here, is equal to the conjugate of this. So I'm going to write this as alpha beta conjugate plus, and then we're going to replace this with this. So this is alpha beta conjugate conjugate plus modulus squared. So now what we have here is we have a complex number plus the conjugate of that complex number. So we know that that's equal to two times the real part of that complex number. And this is probably the trickiest step, I think, in the entire proof, right? So again, notice that this number is the same as this number, and we just have a conjugate over it. So this is your z, z plus z conjugate, right? z plus z conjugate is two times the real part of z. z plus z conjugate is two times the real part of z. By the way, if, if you instead take the conjugate of, let's say, um, this one, you know, let's say you had chosen this one instead, that would just be beta conjugate and then conjugate conjugate, so alpha. So you would end up with this. So it still works. You, go, you get a different complex number here, but it'll still work. Like, you could still do the proof. Now, um, something that needs to be noted here is that we can create an inequality now uh, with the real part. Um, so if you have 
let's just derail here. If you have a complex number, say z equals x plus i y, right? Then the real part of z, that's x. That's equal to the square root of x squared, as you know, as long as um, well, actually, it's less than or equal to the square root of x squared, right? Because x could be negative here. And that's less than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is the modulus of z. So the real part of a complex number is less than or equal to the, to the modulus of the complex number, okay? Because you can do something like this, all right? So very, very important to note. Uh, the equality here would be true if x was non-negative, right? Um, but uh, I didn't want to put an equals here because if x is negative, then it's actually going to be less than, right? So you do have to be careful there. And then this is obviously true because this is a bigger number, right? You're adding a y squared, which is also zero or positive, and this is the modulus. So all is good here. So this is going to be less than or equal to the modulus of alpha squared plus two times the modulus of alpha beta conjugate plus that piece there. All right, so now we can um, break this up. So this is equal to this. Right, you can distribute the uh, modulus over the product. And whenever you have the uh, modulus of the conjugate, it's just the modulus of the original complex number. So this is, this is a good proof because it requires that you know like a lot of the basic properties. So it's worth like, if you're following this video and something's unclear, it's worth that you go over it on your own, okay? And then now this, and try to understand every single step. So now we have that this is less than or equal to this. So I'll write it down here. So the modulus of alpha plus beta squared is less than or equal to the modulus of alpha plus the modulus of beta squared. So taking square roots, so taking, everything's positive, so we can taking the square root, so taking the square root, what do we have? We have alpha plus beta is less than or equal to this. And that's my friends, is the proof of the triangle inequality for complex numbers. So hopefully uh, everything was clear. If it wasn't, um, maybe try watching it again. Um, you know, rewind, pause, and then try to do it on your own so that you know how to do it. I think that's really important, especially with something like this. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here. You've got all three of these things. Then you've got this last one here, which this idea, right, is very key, right? This is super, super key. Um, very, very important. So technically, x, just, just as a side note, x is less than or equal to the absolute value of x, which is equal to the square root of x squared, which is less than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So you can show an extra step, which is equal to the modulus of z. So you can do something like this if you wanted to show an extra step. So, yeah. And again, this is necessary because x could be negative, right? So um, you can't put equals. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.